Hello again, everyone. Today I am here to swatch some new to me deep, deep light watercolors. I have profiled this small company on my channel in the past, and I really feel good about profiling them. Um, I am not sponsored in any way by this company, but I just, I, you know, I, to date, I have not yet been sponsored by any company, actually. These are all my, um, my honest reviews and my honest thoughts about products at this point. Maybe someday if someone gives me a good offer, I might, I might take it. But for now, I'm just buying things I like and showing off the things that I like to you so that you can, um, hopefully use that information to make your own purchasing decisions. So Deep Deep Light, they're a really, really lovely small company. Um, they are in, located in Eastern Europe, uh, but I'm not exactly sure where. I w um, I've looked it up a couple of times and I, I, I think it might be Lithuania, but don't, don't hold me to that. <laughs> I, I really can't remember. Um, I know a lot of people reached out to them recently because of the conflict in the Ukraine, um, because they are, you know, somewhat close to that area. Apparently they're doing fine. Um, they did recently take a little break, a vacation, which apparently was already pre-planned, but they had a sale during the time that they were gone. So I went and got some watercolors in that sale and they're, they're always so lovely and they, they have really great customer, ex customer service. So I ordered a few colors, um, and they were asking me what size tin I would like because they had they said they had tins that could accommodate up to I think 24 colors which I think is what this is I, I'm not quite sure though um because you know they said hey we have all these sizes we're we're happy to send you a larger palette uh even though you're not ordering that many colors so that's what I did and I thought that was really nice of them to reach out oh and I forgot I do actually have a couple of other because I'd I'd um Put all these together in here. I do have a couple of other um, sort of independent maker watercolors in here, which I will also talk about, but I want to make sure I find the card for them. Hold on just a second. And these are completely new to me, and um, so it's from L'Ecole des Beaux Arts, um, and I believe this place is located in Santa Fe and they uh, make their own watercolors. I just found them recently. Um, so these I'm not, I have no opinion about these yet. So you'll be seeing them for the first time today. I'll go ahead and swatch them along with these. Um, you'll be seeing these for the first time today along with me. So I'll bring this out and let you know a little bit more about them again once I get to that. Sorry, that was a surprise. I'd forgotten I put those in there. I'll put those off to the side for now, but I will do them at the end. And um, they always include, so deep, back to deep, deep light now. So they always include little samples, which I think is really sweet. I am not going to sample some of the colors that I have already swatched on the channel. So golden gold ochre and solstice fern, I have swatched before on the channel. I will put my, uh, put a link to the prior videos that I did for this brand so that you can see those. I don't think I had raw sienna deep blue, dark umbra, silver tough. I definitely have already um, swatched. And then this is light umbra. So I will swatch these and then the individual colors that I got. So let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Yeah, I think this does hold 26. So that, that'll be really nice to have this larger palette. And I I wanted to go big because I do like to have a lot of options whenever I have colors together in a palette. And I think I might put together some of my older Deep Deep Light colors together in here. Um, and these um, swatches or these little dot cards I have kept in a little box as well so that I can um, use those. So you might notice that I have a couple of pieces of paper here. I didn't want this to distract from my intro, but basically I'm waiting for colors to dry on the opposite page that I am here. So I, but I didn't have, I had a limited amount of time, so I wanted to keep swatching. So there's room on this page, but it already has 
some uh, Dishali handmade watercolor here on the page. I didn't want to leave that here originally because I did not want you to think that these were deep, deep light watercolors, which they are not. So I'm going to let these uh, be shown here. I'll put a link to the video where I uh, swatched these Dishali watercolors, which were quite lovely as well. I do say, I do have to say though that deep, deep light is more my favorite than them. Although, you know, they're lovely. I think they're just a little less accessible for most people because of the cost and the cost of shipping for these. Although Deep Deep Light, I will say, is not inexpensive either, but their, their watercolors are so lovely and they have a lot of colors that are really um, granulating, which I love. So I'm gonna go ahead and do these little swatches first. I'm gonna put the swatches that we already have off to the side here. So I'm gonna do these. So this one's Bullfinch. I think it's kind of cute that they have some named after birds. I'm just gonna do a swipe across just so that I have room for everything. And I may have to switch to the other page here. So that's Bullfinch. And then this next one is Deep Blue. I always love a good blue. And I think what I'm gonna do with the pans is I'm gonna wet them first a little bit because I'm noticing these, since I'm not wetting them first, they're showing up a little less saturated. Um, you can get really, really saturated colors out of pretty much every one of their colors. Actually, let me go ahead and put a little dot on these. And then let's go back here. So this is Dark Umbra. That's really lovely. And I do actually also tend to have somewhat of a lighter hand when I first go into watercolors as opposed to, you know, getting a super saturated color. So um, you're also getting that effect as well. And this is light umbra. Let me keep these in order so that when I go back and label them, they will be in order. And I'm going to do burnt, well, let's do raw sienna first because they were in order of <laughs> being wet. This is raw sienna. Lovely. And then burnt umbra. Oh, maybe I should have done that with the others, the other umbras up there. Yeah. And you can see there's already more saturation after the, the pigment has been wet a little bit. Okay, so that's the samples. And then I got, I think I got an, one of their nature sets and then I got a couple of extra colors. So this is, I think this is Bilberry. Let me go ahead and open that. I probably should have opened these before I started swatching, but it's all right. So this is Bilberry. And I'm gonna go ahead and, looks like there was a little bit of pigment there. I'm gonna go ahead and wet these as I open them so that they will be ready to go. So that was Bilberry. Then we have Blueberry. <laughs> I'm detecting a theme. Berry. So I'm going to add some water to that. And then we have asphalt, which is a color I bought separately because I did have a sample of asphalt um, and really, really liked it. And actually, I don't think I'm going to swatch this one today because I have already swatched it in um, a prior video. So I'll just link to that other video for the asphalt. This one is Forest Green. I see I'm getting a little bit of pigment from one of these here. All right, 
forest green, which looks to be lovely and um, granulating. Then this one is bark, as in the bark of a tree, I assume. paper stuck a little bit to that one and this will happen sometimes especially with handmade watercolors that um, sometimes papers will stick to the thing and that's that's totally normal so this is I think that says cranberry or maybe cra hmm. I think it's cranberry somebody has some very flourishy writing so it's sometimes hard to tell Okay. And I'm laying these out next to me on the paper, next to the paper so that I am aware of what color is what, so that I can keep track. And then we have two last colors. One is cherry, which looks like the color of a cherry blossom. This was one that I was very interested in getting because it's so pretty. And I'm really interested in pink watercolors lately. Not quite sure why, but I am really drawn to pink lately. All right. It almost looks like it has a little bit of la a lavender tone. And then the last one here is um, elderberry, which is a lovely yellow. All right, so since we have two, four, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so let's do that with enough room here to have all of these down on the bottom. And I think I'll probably do the other two on the other page here with the other things that I have over there the from the other company. So this one is Billberry. So let's see, we should have these nice and prepped here oh yeah oh yeah check that out lovely that's bilberry then we have blueberry another lovely one love these let me actually get a little zoomed in here so that you can see those just a little better. Okay. Blueberry, this next one is forest green. Oof. Because these are so pigmented, sometimes that happens. Like I'll flick and then a little bit of pigment will get into another color because once you add water to these, they are super pigmented. Okay, so this one is Bark. Lovely, that little spot there is from me touching the paper at some point. All right, so then we have what I think is Cranberry. Oh wow, that's a really pretty red. Really, really pretty. And then this is Cherry. Oh, so pretty. These are such nice colors. I really love all of their colors. And um, I really do think that you'd be able to get these colors over here that were all samples much more saturated if I had wet them first. Okay, so this next one is Elderberry and I'm gonna go down with this one. That is lovely. Okay. All right, so I will put these up to the camera, but I'm actually gonna let these dry a little bit. And then let's I'm gonna put these off to the side and then I'm gonna open these, which are, let me make sure I can find the card there, is from this company, the L'Ecole des Beaux Arts. Um, they also have classes here, if you're in Santa Fe, <laughs> um, they seem to have some art classes. 
their their website made them seem similar to uh, Case for Making in San Francisco, um, both in their color choices for watercolor and um, just the way the the website was organized. So this, if you can't tell, is fluorescent pink. I this will be my first fluorescent watercolor ever, so that'll be interesting. And then this color is Thulet, which I they were saying is sort of an, um, a really old color as far as its usage. And um, I bet I can fit them down here. I'll just go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna wet these just a little bit. And I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna go into the fluorescent second. And then let's go. Oh, that actually, that's been re-wetting really easily. Okay, so that's lovely. So this is a natural pink, pinkish pigment. And sometimes with, pig, so it's a little bit more gritty. So gritty is, gritty is kind of a bad word. It's, it's a little more coarse, I would say. So sometimes you will get the streaking that you're seeing there, but if you add more water and uh, you can you can really even that out. In fact, if I if I just put a little bit more water here, you can see the more water you add, the more that will be tempered. And um, but it will lighten up the color the more water you add, obviously. Okay, now let's go for this crazy fluorescent. Whoa! Oh my God! Like eyeball burn, right? Okay. So those are really nice. I really like those. They do they do seem similar to me to case for making handmade watercolors. Um, but again, you know, that's that's just from this first experience, not really messing with them too much. But the so fluorescent pink case for making does actually make some fluorescent watercolors. Um, but this was kind of the brightest pink that I could find and I kind of wanted to go bright. So I, I succeeded in that front and I had never seen this color. Um, but I will put a link to this shop as well so you can check those out. Okay, so let's go back and look here. So we have Bullfinch. And again, with these these ones that are here in this row, they're all samples and you could definitely make them richer with more pigment. So this one is Bullfinch. And these are all deep, deep light. Bullfinch, deep blue, dark umbra, light umbra, raw sienna, and um, burnt umbra here at the end. And then here, these were the full pans I got. So this one is Bilberry. Bilberry. <laughs> Blueberry. Forest Green. This one was Bark. Uh, that is, what was that one? That was Cranberry, I think. And that's Cherry. Oops, sorry, getting them off. I was looking at the labels. And then that's Elderberry. And then this is that Thulet, and this is fluorescent pink. And those are all from the um, LDBA studio, the L'Ecole des Beaux Arts studio. And I will put a link to all of these. And I will, since you've seen this one up here, and let me zoom out a little bit. Since you've seen this one up here, the Shali watercolor, I will also put a link to that video and I'll put a link to the prior swatching videos I've done for these. This was a little bit of pigment that I think came off of the bilberry color that left some little spots here. All right, well, there you go. I hope you found that helpful. I'm sorry it was sort of a disjointed swatching with these different brands and things, but um, hopefully you enjoyed. Please feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.